Often people will escape the city and come to a place like Raglan in search of sun, surf and a better way of life. But it's hard to achieve that if you're struggling to find an affordable place to live. Today, we're here in Raglan meeting a young couple who have done a phenomenal job in solving that problem by building a tiny house on wheels. Hey Chris! How's it going? Good mate, how are you? Good, good. Hey Bryce. Hi Eve, lovely to meet you. And it is wonderful to see your beautiful home. This place looks great. Thanks, yeah, welcome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> how did you actually come to be living in a tiny house? Uh, we are kind of pushed into it, I guess. So we are living in town and our landlord had a trailer sitting there and I was kind of like, oh, that's a cool trailer, I'd like to build a tiny house one day. A couple of months later he said, oh you know that tiny house? Yeah, you better build it. Because <laughs> we're getting kicked out of the, our old place. So we had to build it to build the new home. Now this was a DIY build, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, so build everything ourselves. And Chris, you have a background in furniture making, so this must have come quite naturally to you? Yeah, yeah, I guess it's still a little bit different building the actual a house versus furniture and joinery and that sort of thing. And it took us a year. So it's all yeah, timber framing and then plywood, internal and external, and then just macrocarpa battens, all the timbers macrocarpa, just be different stains on it whether it's the outdoor stain on the doors or internal stuff for benches. Now I see you've also got this lovely vegetable garden here and the property that you're on is quite stunning. How did you find this place? It was our landlord's, yeah, he said to move out to the farm and yeah, we found this little posse here and just sort of made it home. Having much luck growing any of your vegetables? <laughs> I mean, it's very organic, <laughs> very wild, but hey, it works. We get produce from it and yeah. We're pretty happy. Now I notice here as well you've got these beautiful tables. Is this your work? Yeah, yeah. So that's all mine. What was it that got you into building furniture? I don't know. I kind of just put stuff together and it usually held so <laughs> just started from there and I think I always wanted to start my own business so I thought I'd start young and so it's been full time for four years. Congratulations. Jeez, thank you. <laughs> now in contrast to that you have a very different profession don't you? You are actually an Olympic athlete. Can you tell me about that? Uh, yeah, so I started rowing back in 2009 I think at school and then it sort of just progressed from there and had a real passion for sport and then when I found rowing it sort of just took off and yeah, a couple of Olympics now and back into it and yeah, enjoying it. Fantastic. So you are your hard at work training at the moment, aren't you? Yep, full time. So currently I'm living back in Cambridge. Come out here in the weekends. So this is sort of like my holiday home now. But yeah, the balance is pretty awesome to have, you know, a really focused, driven aspect of my life and then to come out here and just really relax and unwind and having a tiny home here is just, it's literally like a holiday. Another thing that the tiny home has sort of brought for me was I fell into depression after the Olympics and having the tiny home gave me this purpose of of life. You know, I had this goal to get out of bed and to to see the next stage of the tiny home and, and get excited about what's next. And I was actually always just about <laughs> what are we doing next? Like what's the next step? Yeah, I think it gave me a real sort of a boost to have something to to chew away at. Um, really noticing that the tiny home helped me get out of depression, that goal that then stemmed on to my life and that having a goal, having a purpose is quite important. And so yeah, not only the tiny home but heading forward into life, setting goals in whatever areas in our lives that may be. And it's probably like a lifetime goal of mine, building so many tree huts when I was younger to actually, I was like yeah I want to build my own house. Mm. Doesn't matter about the size of it, but built my own house. <laughs> well, I would love to see how you've done everything on the inside. Can we check it out? Yeah, come on in. <laughs> All right, thank you. This is lovely. That window right there is just such a great feature, isn't it? It's uh, very large for a tiny house, yeah. But we sort of wanted that transparent sort of flow, making it feel like we're almost outside still. So Chris, as a furniture maker, you must have had a great time designing and building all of the furniture and cabinetry in here. I don't know about great time, but um, it's good looking back at it now. Kind of taking a few goes at everything to try to get everything 
to fit right. The stairs will be a three goes at that. Yep. At one point I was throwing the bits of timber out the door having a tantrum, eh? <laughs> so we got there in the end. First of all, tell me about the couch. That looks like a really cool design. The uh, guest wing, so that's when all the friends come over, folds down into a double bed. And they've got the full boxes underneath for storage. And then they kind of pull out as well for added seating around the place. Brilliant. Now, it's really interesting to me how you've got the fire up there, because that looks like a very unusual place to put one. That was last minute to put in, and we realised we needed it in the winter. And, I mean, there was not much space to put it, so we, yeah, threw it up there. How does it work up there? Perfect. Good height for feeding, <laughs> and yeah, it cooks the place. And what is that contraption on the wall behind the fire? Uh, so it kind of shows us everything we need to know if we're going surfing or paragliding. You've got wave height, and then wave period, high tide, low tide, wind speed and wind direction. And how on earth does it tell all of that from your living room? Uh, so there's a clever guy, Mark Duvest, who's made a website which takes all the data from lots of different websites and then connects to that. So that's connected to Wi-Fi. So it's quite a cool bit of kit. So I guess that is something which is an essential bit of kit if you don't have a view of the ocean. Yeah, yeah, that would be our, our view, is it? Exactly, yeah, our ocean view. <laughs> <laughs> now tell me about the design of this kitchen. It looks very large and very functional. Something we didn't want to skimp on. We spend most of our time in the kitchen. You know, we didn't want to have us chopping veggies on top of each other. And so we thought, why not just max out and see what we can do to Make it You've got a nice deep sink there. Yeah, she's pretty big, <laughs> but that's probably another thing we wanted as well. Big sink. So that, you know, when you do have a dinner party, you can just throw all the dishes in there and then you've still got bench space. And do you have a fridge hiding in here somewhere as well? Yeah, in here, fridge freezer. So it's a 12 volt, 24 volt fridge freezer. You know, not too big, not too small. Seems to work for us. I like how you've built it into the cabinetry as well, so you can kind of just keep it all looking smooth through there, but you've got the functionality behind the doors. Nailed it. <laughs> Very nice. And then what do we have down this end? Clothing and bathroom, and then loft. But yeah, we've got a couple of cubbies each, a little bit of hanging space, quite a few books down below, paraglider. <laughs> I mean, it's all we need. You know you're doing all right for storage in a tiny house when you've even got room for a paraglider in your closet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we didn't want it out in the shed, so that's sort of a specialty item and, <laughs> you know, it gets its own home. And what is it that's going on on the side over here? The dining table folds out and then dinner for 12 was our aim, but we've only had dinner for 10 in here. Hey, dinner for 10's doing pretty well, mate. <laughs> what size is the house here? Uh, 6.8 long by... 2.4 wide and then the full height 4.2 that end. Oh, so dinner for 10 inside that space. I don't think you can complain about that one. <laughs> it's not too bad. It's hard work for the guy sitting on the end here. He's got to feed all the food back to everyone. <laughs> There's not a lot of moving when you're sitting down here. <laughs> Fair enough too. And is that the bathroom behind there? Yes, so cavity door slider, just a bit of privacy. We basically left it as small as we could. We don't spend much time in there, so we thought just a normal shower and uh, enough space for a loo was all we needed. It's a separate one, so yeah, we seem to enjoy it almost better than a normal loo. There's um, a fan in it that's running the whole time, so it yeah, smells less than a normal loo. Now, tell me about the stairs. It looks like there's some interesting stuff going on here. So there's our yeah, third go at it. There's storage at the top, and then washing machine in the middle, and just another storage again, and then the cat bowl under the bottom step. I'm impressed that you've managed to fit the washing machine in there as well. That's good going, isn't it? So it's pretty much, yeah, dimensions of washing machine and then that's what we built it around. So I guess that's why it was kind of so tricky to start with. Get the stairs and the washing machine under there while well, we got there in the end. Now, let's talk about this loft because it is really interesting what you've done here. The way that you've built this loft in, it actually looks very open to the rest of the home and it doesn't really close off the space in any way, does it? Yeah, I guess we just wanted the stairs to go up, but the stairs not going so high that you're having to bend down to get onto the top step. So you can still stand there while getting onto bed, but then trying to keep the loft as small as possible so we weren't interrupting the rest of the space through the house. So how long have you been living in the home now? So probably living in here for 18 months, maybe a year as a completed house. And how are you finding living in the home? It's super easy, eh? Yeah. It's just... Easier than I ever thought it would have been. Was there quite a big adjustment to living in the tiny house? 
Well, we moved into a 10 square meter shack for two or three months beforehand, so we kind of had to downsize first, <laughs> yeah, and then kind of move into the big house. There That's the way to do it, right? Makes it feel like you're moving into a mansion. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And can we talk about the cost of this project? What did it take to realize this home? Yeah, I guess fully finished is 32,000. All finished, that's the deck included. But yeah, just a lot of man hours. 32,000 for a tiny house build in New Zealand. That is almost unheard of. How did you achieve that for such a low price? Uh, There's just so many bargains that turned up at the right time, I guess. Mm. Like the toilet was $150. The glass for the doors are free. The glass for this was like $5. <laughs> So it was just the time going into yeah, building the surrounds around a lot of things, but yeah. To even the squabs, you know, we found them at the Raglan Recycle Centre and Chris can sew, so we just did a lot of man hours to make it work for us. A lot more hours than you probably even know how to count, really. I don't even know how to describe how I feel. A lot of the time, like, you'd be sitting up in the loft and it's like, you kind of built the whole thing. I always say it's funny. I just look at the house and say it's funny, <laughs> like knowing the work that's gone into it and building everything. It's just funny. <laughs> There's been a lot of hands-on from friends and family though, and, and I think that's something that's so special about it. You know, yes, we've built our own home, but so have they. They've helped us build our home, and I think that's really special, is looking around and seeing all the love that's in it. I really like the design of this home. I can see all of the time that you've put into the cabinetry and all of the time that you have spent searching for those incredible resources to make this happen has really paid off. Thank you so much for sharing your beautiful home with me. Thank you so much, Bryce. Thank you. Thank you. I absolutely love the approach that Chris and Eve have taken in this house. Chris has all of this skill as a furniture maker that has been transformed into an incredible home and the way that they sought out the bargains to make this house come out at a remarkable figure is truly impressive. It really goes to show that if you set your mind to it, it can still be done to build a wonderful and affordable tiny house.